Hi everyone, welcome to Karan's Gyan. Today I'll be talking about leverage and payoff in futures contracts. As you remember, last time I talked about uh, what is the structure of futures contracts and how futures contracts are traded. Today I'll be talking about the most important part about futures contracts, which is leverage. Uh, you wondered why last time I said it's better to buy futures if you're trying to make a short term position in a share all right so uh, the point of buying futures is leverage you can leverage your money you can leverage one rupee into 10 rupees and earn a higher profit if you think your opinion on something is right so as you remembered uh, we bought tata consultancy futures because we, we thought the market is hammering the stock for something that is already known because of that we thought the the share is gonna go up and hence we bought futures we chose buying futures because futures are leveraged and as a result we'll earn a higher profit you would understand this topic in detail in this video all right so what what is leverage i'll explain you the basics of leverage for example uh, there is this Apartment being built by Hiran Dani, you know, as you don't know, Hiran Dani is a popular developer. So you go to Hiran Dani, you say, all right, I want to buy an apartment. How much is the apartment for? He says, uh, sir, two BHK apartment is for one crore rupees. And you feel, all right, I, I don't want to live in this apartment. I already have a house of my own. But Hiran Dani is a popular developer and the place where they're building this apartment it's gonna it's gonna be good in the future you know so if i buy this apartment real quick and i flip it within a year or two i'll be able to earn a quick buck so uh, what do i do i i don't have one crore with me i have only 10 lakh rupees cash so i say uh, i i tell the builder yeah please book a flat for me i got 10 lakh rupees i'll finance the rest of the money with a bank i'll buy a home loan i'll take a home loan so I give give 10 lakh rupee down payment to the builder. I finance myself. I get 90 lakh rupees financing from the bank. So my initial uh, da uh, down payment is 10 lakh rupees and uh, my bank financing is 90 lakh rupees. So technically I have bought a 1 crore rupee apartment for the price of rupees 10 lakh. However, I do have to pay 90 lakh rupees back to the bank, which I'll pay over the time because I think the apartments is, is more valuable than it is right now. So I wait for some time. I keep paying EMIs of the bank. I keep paying interest, you know, and uh, over time, I, f I see that the, the price of the apartment has risen to 1 crore 25 lakh rupees. Uh, I wanted to make a quick buck. That's why I bought the apartment. So I immediately sell this apartment for 1 crore 25 lakh rupees. All right. So now think of it as this way. I bought an apartment for 10 lakh rupees, a 1 crore worth of apartment for 10 lakh rupees. And I'm selling the same apartment for 1 crore 25 lakh rupees. So basically on my 10 lakh rupees, I have earned 35 lakh rupees because I financed 90 lakh rupees from the bank. I've leveraged myself. So my net earnings is 35 lakh rupees, you know, 90, 90 lakh, which I, have to, which I owe the bank and uh, the, the money I've got from selling the, prop, uh, selling the apartment, which is one crore, 25 lakhs. As a result, my earnings are 35 lakh rupees. My net, net profit would be 25 lakh rupees because I gave a, uh, down payment of 10 lakh rupees as a result i have earned 25 lakh rupees that's my net profit now i'll see my roi now what is roi roi is rate of return on investment uh, so how will i calculate my return on investment return on investment has a simple formula what is my profit and what was my investment so my net profit divided by my net investment my net profit as you can see in this figure it's 25 lakh and my investment is just 10 lakh because that was my down payment. I won't say my investment is 1 crore because I have financed 90 lakh rupees from the bank. My investment is 10 lakh. 
as a result i have leveraged myself and my roi is 250% which is a good amount all right had i not financed myself had i had 1 crore with me i would have bought the apartment as it is and i would i would just make 25% roi if i didn't leverage myself okay so you can think of it as this you know like if i had 1 um, crore rupees cash with me i still wanted to leverage so i would buy 10 apartments and i would get 9 crore financing from the bank and i would sell these 10 apartments which are worth 10 crore for 12 crore 50 lakh and on my on my investment of 1 crore i got back uh, 2.5 crore you know so it's still the same you know so it just leverage i have leveraged 1 rupee into 10 rupees and thus my roi is much higher this is what leverage is so i'll uh, give the key takeaways so i was a, my friend was able to uh, participate in a large transaction by paying only 10% of transaction value my friend there's an error it is me who bought this property um so there was a 10% uh, down payment so you can i as you remember i talked about margin where a token amount is given so you can take uh, 10 lakh rupees as a margin of future contract if this was a future contract the down payment is the margin which is 10 lakh rupees so you have leverage this is what future does you can leverage your money in future so you will be able to buy more of some commodity or more of some asset all right uh, so this type of transaction is leverage transaction as i said earlier it is quite obvious 25% increase in my asset value resulted in 50% increase in my return on investment so small change in asset value impacted my returns massively <clears throat> so moving on to futures how does leverage uh, in futures work so you recall the previous example we i gave you in the last video i wanted to buy tcs because i thought the stock is getting hammered for no reason you remember the snapshot uh, however i didn't buy tcs for 2374 rupees 90 paisa i bought it for 2362 rupees this is an example i'm giving you okay so this was my buy price and i sell it for uh, this price this is an example just take it as an example i buy tcs futures at 2362 rupees per share and i sell it for 2519 rupees per share so i'll i'll give you a, a comparison of how much profit i would have earned if i bought it if i bought Uh, TCS in spot market. That means if I bought TCS as shares, versus how much profit I would be earning if I bought TCS as futures. So, uh, why the question is again? Why am I buying TCS futures? Because futures can help me leverage money and I can earn a greater profit. Just like the example I gave you in buying an apartment, he earned an apartment. Okay, so I'll give you an comparison. Uh, okay, just just another note. Generally, future price and spot price are not equal. I'm just taking them to be equal because it can be easier for a calculation and it may not confuse you a lot. You remember seeing this snapshot? I said that the TCS future price is two thousand three hundred and seventy-four rupees ninety paisa, while the underlying value, while the spot price, is two thousand three hundred. And fifty nine rupees ninety five paisa. You know, there's a difference in the spot price and the future price. Uh, however, there's not much of a difference considering how la uh, how high the price of TCS already is. If you see percentage wise, it'll be less than a percent difference. Yeah, about a percent different. Um. So yeah, I'll be talking about. I'll be comparing the spot market. Uh, what will happen if I buy? TCS at spot market and what will happen if I buy TCS at future market? Um, so I have one lakh rupee capital available. All right, my buy date is obviously the same. Uh, my buy price is two thousand three hundred and sixty two rupees per share. As I told you, the lot size of TCS is one hundred and twenty five. Uh, lot market lot one two five. 
so that is a lot sex what is the margin you remember uh, i told you in futures there is a margin amount that has to be paid which is basically a token amount this is what helps in uh, leveraging futures so what i'll do is i'll i'll find out the contract value uh, recall contract value equals to the price of futures into the market lot size price of future is 2362 rupees and the lot size is 125 as a result my contract value is about 295000 rupees uh, however i have to pay a margin amount so margin amount is 14% of the contract value so 14% of the contract value which we derived earlier is about 41000 rupees so we are basically buying a contract that is worth about 3 lakh rupees we are buying that contract for 40000 rupees by paying a deposit by paying a margin just like a down payment we paid in the apartment above where the apartment was worth 1 crore but we paid a margin amount or a down payment amount of 10 lakh rupees so we have leveraged here and you have leveraged here hmm so i have 1 lakh rupees so if i buy spot on spot market i have to buy the shares completely so i'll be able to buy only 42 shares with the price of uh, tcs going on and with the cash i have like i have with me i have in hand so uh, with the margin however if i'm buying futures i can buy two lots i can't buy fractional lots i can only buy whole lots Ideally, I can buy 2.4 lots, but fractional lots aren't possible. You'll have to buy either one entire lot or no lot at all. So I'll be able to buy two lots, which is about 250 shares. So compared to the spot market uh, and I, I compared to the 42 shares I can buy in spot market, I'll be able to own a contract of 250 shares. Now please remember i'll be able to own a contract it's a contract i don't have 250 shares i can't buy shares at a cheaper price because there's a different price going on it's a future contract i'm paying a margin i'm owning a contract by paying a margin i don't own the shares i just own a contract hmm uh expired so uh, sell date is 23 december i sell it i give the as per my example i'm selling it i'm buying it on 15 december and i'm selling it not 23 december buying it for 2362 selling it for 2519 all right so i sell it on 23 december for the price of 2519 so compared so my sell value is about uh six lakh twenty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty rupees so if i see the difference between the profit earned between spot price and future price i put an investment of one lakh rupees my investment is sold for one lakh uh, five thousand seven hundred and ninety eight rupees and my profit earned here is about six thousand rupees whereas in the case of future i bought two contracts all right my contract value is 2,95,000 rupees so uh, two two contracts two lots of contracts will give me about 5,90,000 rupees you know it is what the contract is worth for all right and i'm buying and and i've sold the contract for 6,29,000 rupees hence my profit is about 40,000 rupees so if you see the difference between my annualized return you know i have earned i have earned a profit of 40000 rupees on about 82000 rupees i invested because i bought two lots for 82000 rupees okay whereas here i am earning like a meager profit of 6% obviously comparing to 47% because 6% is a lot of money but compared to 47% it is nothing uh, as a result my annualized profit you know like if i do this every day every day of the year my annualized profit would be 2000 uh, percent all right and compared to 235 percent so you seeing how the leverage has drastically improved my profit however you need to you need to keep in mind that all that gold all that is all that glitters is not gold so if you're seeing something that is too good to be true there is 
a downside to it which is equally bad like i said uh if your directional view is right if you think tcs is going to go up and you buy futures you you can make a huge profit all right uh, but leverage is like a double edged sword all right if if you know what you're doing you can create wealth if you don't know what you're doing you can destroy the wealth uh similarly the margin here is about 14% there are some commodities with margin of 2% 3% 1% 0.1% it depends on what the margin is there are some commodities that are so volatile that the margin is about 75% because they change you know the the volatility is really high the standard deviation is really high so tcs like i told you it's a comparatively a big company hence it doesn't fluctuate as much thus its margin is 14% and you can leverage it at a decent rate so how do you calculate leverage leverage is contract value divided by margin paid all right we calculated the contract value here about 3 lakh rupees and the margin deposit we paid for it which is 40000 rupees so you are basically buying 3 lakh worth of contract for 40000 rupees which is a token amount hence our leverage is 7.14 all right so i can say that my 1 rupee is acting as 7.14 rupees this is a very good ratio you know like you shouldn't trade above a leverage that is more than 10% like which is more than 10 you know uh, there was this incident like if you recall 2009 financial crisis banks had leverage of 250 500 and that's why when the market had a downturn they lost billions of dollars and the whole world was in recession so like i said uh, leverage is a double edged sword you know like it can create wealth or it can destroy wealth as quickly as it create wealth it can destroy wealth in the same speed mm -hmm. uh, now for example uh, if i ask you what is the leverage of the example i gave here so the uh, the contract value is 1 crore the margin I paid is 10 lakh rupees, hence the leverage is 10. Hmm. Uh, now, for example, I assume that I pay 7000 rupees instead of 41,000 rupees. When I'm buying the TCS future contracts, I pay only 7000 rupees as margin amount uh, because uh, for some reason, if the exchange tell me, tells me the margin is less, I only end up paying 7000 rupees so my leverage would be 42.17 do you see how high the number is so technically my 1 rupee is acting as 42 rupees and if I want to find uh, like how much a company has to fall or how much uh, the future has to fall for my for my leverage to be zero for I mean for my margin to be zero for my deposit to completely go away I can you know find the leverage inverse which is 14% you again get the same number all right uh, if I find the you know how much money I would need how much there how much price change should be there for me to completely lose my margin deposit okay the uh, I'll find the leverage inverse of 42.17 which is about 2.3% that means well, it means that if the future price increases by 2.3 percent i can double my margin but if the future falls by 2.3 percent i can lose my entire margin i can exp i'll explain you with a better example you know with a more practical example for example you remember i sold this apartment for 1 crore 25 lakh rupees uh, for example i if hiramdani doesn't do well the uh, apartment is a flop show and no one wants to buy that apartment uh, I, I'll lose a lot of money all right so oh, I'll have to sell the apartment at a discount price uh, because I want to get away from the position I want to lose this uh, losing position so I can sell my apartment for 90 lakh rupees basically suppose I sell the one crore apartment for 90 lakh rupees because the market isn't doing as well as I thought so technically I lose my uh, technically I lose my 10% deposit because 
the ninety lakh rupees I got from the apartment, I'll have to give it to the bank, right? Because I took that money from the bank. So the leverage is ten here. So one divided by ten is ten percent. All right, zero point one. So which is ten percent. So if the value of the apartment falls by ten percent, I'll lose my margin amount. If the value of the apartment increases by ten percent, I'm doubling my return. You know, so if the apartment goes to one crore ten lakh rupees, you know, it increases by ten percent. Uh, my my return on investment is hundred percent because I'll sell the apartment for one crore ten lakh rupees. I'll pay nine. I'll pay ninety lakh rupees back to the bank. And I'll my ten ten lakh rupees was already my investment, and I'm left with the other ten lakh rupees, which is my profit. So uh, leverage inverse gives you how much change in the future contract is required for you to completely get done with the margin you deposited. Uh, like I told you personally, I don't stick. Like personally, I really don't like leverage. Warren Buffett says liquor and leverage both are bad. So I stick with le leverage trades that are one is to ten or one is to twelve, not beyond this. I'm not uh, Goldman Sachs or a big bank who would lose all the money in mortgage bonds in two thousand nine. So difference between shares and futures. Now, what is the difference between shares and futures? Like I told you, future is based on shares. It is a derivative. Future derives its value from shares. If a share goes up. Its future will also go up. If share goes down, its future will also go down. However, if I'm investing in a share, I'm being a shareholder to it. You know, so the company increases in size, my share value increases, and I'll 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 earn I'll generate value. There is a value that is being created. So if I'm owning a share. And the share price increases. It's because the company's value is increasing, and there's a value creation in it. However, if I'm buying future, I'm basically betting against someone else who's selling the same future. Uh, if I'm buying future, I'm thinking the share price will go up. That's why I'm buying future. If someone's selling future, he's thinking that the share price will go down. That's why he's selling the future. So it's just like a bet. It's he's just taking the opposite side of the bet. So the money which I lose, he'll gain. The money which he loses, I'll gain. So in contrast, you see, future there is no money being created. Money is just going out from one pocket to the next. Hence, future is considered as a zero sum game. Whatever I lose, he gains. Whatever he loses, I gain. All right. So this is the future payout price. It's a very linear graph. You can you can see. I bought it at I bought TCS at two three six two. So if I sell it at two three six two, my profit is zero. If I sell it more than two three six two, my profit is this half the graph. If I sell it at lesser than two three six two, my profit my loss is this half of the graph. Like you see bracket bracket in accounting terms means negative. If this is a buyer's P and L, what do you think is a seller's P and L? Seller's P and L would be, you know, just the mirror image of this. It will be something like this, you know, because I like I told you, it's a zero sum game. So whatever is the buyer's profit is the seller's loss, and whatever is the seller's profit is the buyer's loss. All right, guys. So this is more or less about how leverage and payoff works in futures. I hope you understood my concepts. If you don't understand any uh, any side of the If you don't understand anything about what I explained to you today, please ask me a question in the comments. If you like the video, please press the like button. If you want more videos to come up, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want this PDF, I can uh, work something out and send it to you. All right, guys, have a nice day. Bye.